Welcome back. As we mentioned, the debate over abortion rights is now center stage in this year's midterm contest. And it's mostly going to be an issue with Republicans. But there is one place where it's a Democratic debate, if you will. And it's down in Texas, where longtime incumbent Henry Cuellar is under fire from his opponent, Jessica Cisneros, and some progressives for his self-described pro-life stance on abortion. Democratic leaders in the House, for what it's worth, are standing by the embattled moderate. House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn, the third highest ranking Democrat in the House, rallied support for Congressman Cuellar in San Antonio yesterday. Shortly before taking the stage, he even defended his support in an interview with my colleague Garrett Haig. Take a listen. Is there still room in the Democratic Party for a self-described pro-life member? I hope so. I hope so. We ought not have litmus tests in our party. We never have had, and we should not start now. If this district is anything like it was, we are, to me, it gives us a much better chance of winning this seat uh, than anybody else. All of this comes three weeks out from Election Day, with Cisneros and Cuellar set for a heated runoff rematch in the 28th congressional district down there. And Jessica Cisneros, an immigration lawyer and Democratic candidate for Texas 20th, joins me now. Uh, Ms. Cisneros, I really appreciate you coming on. Of course, happy to be here. Uh, let me start with, um, you heard Congressman Clyburn's remarks there, uh, and I understand you believe that his position on abortion should be enough for them to pull their support. Um, but you've run on abortion rights before, and the voters know that he is a self-described pro-life uh, candidate. Um, why do you think voters have re-elected him uh, uh, with, with that abortion rights stance? I mean, it's a challenge going up against someone who has been entrenched for a very long time. Henry Quet has been in office um, at one level or the other longer than I've been alive. And for me to, at that time, be a 26-year-old first-time challenger with a, running a completely 100% 100 grassroots campaign, we're not taking a single dime of corporate PAC money, and come within three percentage point of defeating Henry Cuellar last cycle, we just had, had to come back and finish the job this time around. We had our election, our primary election on March 1st. We were just 800 votes difference. Uh, there was an 800 vote difference between our campaign. So we're getting closer and closer on March 1st. The voters, um, elect, uh, they, the majority of voters in the district voted for a pro-choice candidate. Right. And for us, it's about trying to turn out those voters on the May 24th runoff election. Talk about, let me ask you this. There, there seems to be the district is a bit more divided on abortion rights than maybe your typical Democratic-leaning district. How much of that is uh, more conservative religious beliefs uh, among Latinos in general? What do you ascribe that to? I feel like people have just taken Henry Cuellar's word that this district is as conservative as it is when it comes to this issue. I mean, we've been running on it since last cycle, as you said, back in uh, 2019 when I first decided to run. Um, we're bringing it up again this cycle because we have noticed, and I think this week really points out the urgency um, of protecting not just Roe, but so many of our fundamental freedoms and civil liberties that stem from um, this kind of case law. And I know that it's important to voters because I've been out there talking to them myself. I remember when Henry Cuellar was the only Democrat to vote with Republicans against codifying Roe last year. We had a phone bank right after that. We didn't plan it that way. It just so happened. And the first few voters that I got on the line were talking about you know, they were telling me about how upset they were that Henry Cuellar had sided with Republicans on this issue. Uh, you heard Jim Clyburn there. He said he doesn't think there should be a litmus test. On this, you believe there should be a litmus test. Why? What would you tell Jim Clyburn? In this moment, we are watching the fall of Roe and the erosion of our fundamental rights. And this moment, we truly... I mean, you, it necessitates a champion that's going to fight for our people's rights in this district. And I've always said that this race truly goes beyond South Texas. The last thing we want is to hold on to a slim Democratic majority and then have someone like Henry Cuellar, who's going to keep signing with Republicans, not just on this issue, but he's done it on things like the PRO Act. He's voted to you know, fund the border wall. I mean, has an A rating from the NRA. There's so many key issues where he's always signing with Republicans. And he could become the Joe Manchin of the House. We don't want Henry Cuellar to be the deciding vote on the future of our fundamental freedoms and rights in this country. We just can't risk that. And if you're watching this and you want to help us out, we're 19 days away from our election, and we need all the support we can get. I, it is not, I, I'm sure it's not lost on you that you've seen in some of these primary matchups that have put the progressive wing and the establishments against each other, 
The establishment has come out on top. You saw that in Ohio. How do you plan to buck that trend? Um, I mean, again, we're getting closer and closer. We were, there was just a one percentage point difference in our race during the March 1st Democratic primary. We know this is a winnable race, and we've seen it happen before. I mean, Marie Newman and Cori Bush did it last cycle, and we're planning on doing it this cycle as well. What do you say to Jim Clyburn, who says that the, he, I mean, he clearly is endorsing Cuellar because he thinks Cuellar can hold the seat, and there's concern that you cannot hold the seat, that you're going to be considered too progressive for this district? Make your case. Sure. People in this district aren't voting for me because I am progressive. They're voting for me because I'm putting forth policies that are actually going to enact change in this district. This district, for example, my hometown has a 30 percent poverty rate. We've historically had very low rates of people that are insured. I mean, people are coming out and voting for us and are you know, giving this entrenched incumbent the run of his life because we need change. And I plan on delivering on that. And I really hope that the Democratic leadership doesn't stand in the way of the change that South Texans want to see. There's so many people rallying behind this campaign. We've been able to nickel and dime our way to with, with support, with votes, with donations, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this very entrenched corporate incumbent I guess it just shows the power that we have here in South Texas. And this is the kind of race where yeah. we are centering people. We are centering um, the campaign around people as well with our voter outreach efforts to keep this district safely blue in this midterm election. Um, very quickly, if you get elected, um, President Biden may be calling you and saying, hey, you're on the you're, you're representing folks on the border. What do they want in a border policy? What do they want? when it comes to Title 42, what would you tell them? Um, to repeal this Trump relic, it's not surprising that Henry Cuellar is supporting keeping Title 42 because he's known as Trump's favorite Democrat. He voted with Donald Trump 70 percent of the time during Trump's administration. So it's no surprise that he's supporting, you know, keeping Title 42 instead of repealing it. I am an immigration and human rights attorney. I was born and raised in this border district in my hometown of Laredo. I can put forth, I'm excited once elected to shape our border policy in a way that takes, you know, into consideration the joys and the challenges of living here on the border. So whenever we do win, I'm more than happy to take that call from President Biden and help. Jessica Cisneros, uh, one of the two Democratic candidates in the 28th Congressional District. It's a runoff that we will have later this month. Appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective with us.